Hi everybody, and welcome back to Zelda World's walkthrough of The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. I am the Dongo Bomber, and I will be walking through the second part of Orden Village. This video is the second part of five in this chapter. I forgot to say that this chapter will have five videos in the last. So anyway, some kids outside wake us up, and apparently Link sleeps up here with no bed, I guess. So go on ahead and climb down the ladders, and there's really nothing you can do in your house right now, so you can continue outside to where the kids are. Okay, so once you get out of here, you can again just climb down the ladder and head over and talk to the kids. Now, the one you're talking to right now who just went, ah, his name is uh, Talo. And, um, the little one right there, his name is, um, Mallow, and Talon and Mallow are brothers, and then that's Beth, who we already met right there. Um, now what they're talking about is apparently Sarah, the shop owner who we met last video, she, um, she's selling a slingshot at their, um, at her shop, and, uh, the kids really want it, but Beth says, no, I can't let you borrow it, so they're kind of in a predicament there. But anyway, I think I remember, um, Colin said he'd have my fishing rod ready for me today, so let's check it out. You can ask Yulia, I guess. She looks worried. So, she says Russell's gone. But, she lost a cradle. It's a baby cradle, and it seemed to have float floated downstream, which sinks, so... You can go ahead and walk over here, towards this vine wall. And you'll get some character named Jaggle to talk to you. He is um, Talo Malo's father, and his house is the one with the, um, the water wheel right there. And um, so he tells you to check out Sarah's cat. And um, as you can see, uh, the cat's staring into the water. And he thinks he's going to catch a fish. Now, everything that happens in this uh, er, um, sequence here in the morning in Orden Village, it all sort of like ties together. It's really good, how they, really fun how they did it, I guess you could say. So then he says you can hop across these rocks and blow the grass, but we're actually going to skip that piece of grass and um, go over to this one here. Now if you notice, you know, this is like the horse grass. You pick it up, you push A to blow into it, and he said this calls it eagle. Um, this grass will be placed all throughout Hyrule. Um, the eagle grass is less common. However, uh, horse grass is everywhere in a Hyrule field and such, you know. But it it's sort of replaces the ocarina, I guess. Anyway, you can take the hawk and you can aim it towards this monkey who happens to be holding a cradle. Some weird musical start to play. And uh, I actually didn't notice this until recently, but it actually is in key with the normal Orden Village theme, which we're hearing right now. I, I never noticed that because I was too focused on what was happening, you know. So you can go ahead back and uh, talk to Yuli, and well, not really talk to her, a cutscene just uh, takes place. So, she says, oh, well, there's a, I'm supposed to give you the fishing rod, so you have to walk with her back to the house. Now, she moves, like, really slow because of her pregnancy, but you can just run up the hill, and uh, then she'll just be there. The first time I played, I waited for her, and it took forever. Well, luckily, we gave her the cradle, otherwise she would have forgotten to give us her fishing rod. And here we go. We got the fishing rod, our first item, and uh, it's a little confusing how to use it, especially in the Wii version. But it, it it gets easier after a while. And I'll wait till you get to the the later fishing hole. That that's that is tough on the Wii version. GameCube version it's a bit easier, but on the Wii it's just like whoa. <laughs> it's like you don't even need to buy a fishing simulator. You can just get Twilight Princess and play that. Okay, so now you want to go over here, and as uh, Jaggle mentioned, um, uh, Sarah's cat was looking for um, uh, fish in the water. So we want to catch a fish. So you just hold C stick down and you release, he'll fling it up in the air and you let go of it. And then once it gets in the water, once you see the bobber start to sink down really fast, you want to pull back on C stick and then you'll catch a fish like that just happened and we got a green gill, 14 inches. Now, I was confused the first time. I was like, wait, doesn't the cat want the fish? Well, you actually have to fish twice. Once to get its attention, the second time to, um, actually have it, you know, grab the fish. Really, pretty simple. It's just a little confusing at first how to fish and what to do here. And it grabs it. More annoying music, and Link's like, what the heck? 
we have to watch this cutscene play out. No big deal, though. This is like the one cutscene you can't skip in this game, actually. You can skip most cutscenes except for this one. <laughs> Hopefully you know where to go. Okay, now before we go into Sarah's shop, well, if, if you'd gone in before you rescued the cat, you couldn't buy anything because she'd be too uh, sad. Uh, because, you know, her cat's gone, but... Anyway, we need to gather rupees so we can buy the slingshot, which is in her shop, of course. So you can walk through grass, as I showed, you can throw pumpkins down, uh, and, you know, if you throw too many pumpkins down, though, Jag will be like, hey, don't waste food, if you do it near him, at least. But there's some easier way to get rupees, and I'm going to show you that. You can climb up here, and... Uh, climb up this ladder, and on top of, uh, this is actually the mayor's house, if you didn't notice, um, up here there is a yellow rupee, uh, you just walk forward and you get it. Can't really see it because it of the weird camera angle, but it's right there in the middle. So yellow is worth 10, and you, some more hot grass, you can just pull that up, and, uh, you can't, you can't, uh, use hawks to grab rupees, but what you can do is use the hawk to grab the chicken, or the cuckoo, as they're, called in Zelda, and you can use it to grab the cuckoo, and you can fly over to this ridge and grab some more rupees, another yellow rupee, and you just grab the cuckoo, and it's kind of funny, he just brings it up to you, and I love how they flip out like all the cuckoos when you're holding them, but they never try to get out of your grasp, so anyway, another um, 10 rupees right there, and uh, so you just really need 10 more, but there's another 15 you can easily get. Now if you talk to Hench, um, you'll find out that he is uh, trying to get this bee's nest uh, off the tree because um, yeah, his wife's been hassling him and he wants they want to get bee larvae for the shop, uh, but he can't figure out how to get it down. So Jaggle told you earlier about the grass right next to him, on the, on the pillar next to him. And uh, so you can jump across and use that, and that way you can knock down the bee's nest. Again, the hawk will come. This cutscene is skippable, but I'm not really going to skip any cutscenes at all in this walkthrough. I'm just going to leave everything in. Okay, so you just send it right back up at the hawk's nest. Easy enough. I mean, the hawk's nest, I mean, the bee's nest. <laughs> Whoops. Send the hawk at the bee's nest. The bees won't attack you now, but if you were to like uh, shoot the slingshot once you get it at the um, at the bee's nest, then they would attack you if you get any closer than the hawk there. But okay, they actually do quite a bit of damage to you when you have no shields or anything to protect you. You just have your yourself, you know, in this state here. I just wish Link climbed the vines a bit faster, like an ocarina of time, you know. He, he just, you know, kind of zoomed up him. It wasn't unrealistic, but in this, they really slowed it down. It's not a big deal. But still. Okay, so this you want to be very careful, otherwise you'll fall off and have to climb all the way up again. You want to get the blue one first, it's easier. And car carefully walk back. And you can make a running start for this one once you're on um, the camera's behind it, and then jump off like that, and you can get it. Alright, then you can go right into Sarah's house, and the music will be all happy and like the normal shop music uh, throughout the game. If you walked in here earlier, she would have been actually kind of sad, and um, you wouldn't be able to buy anything. But she thinks that uh, her cat caught the fish all by itself. It, it um, What happened apparently was that um, the cat you know, took the, fi the fish for dinner the night before and felt bad. And Sarah said to get outside the house. But anyway, you know, so brought the fish back, she's happy, and she gives you a bottle full of milk. Now, the milk is kind of useless, it only replenishes three hearts. But, um, she gives you the empty bottle. And that, you can put anything in. You can get up to four in this game. But, uh, yeah, so you buy the slingshot, she says, Wait a minute, you're too young, you're too old for this, it's for, it's for kids. But she lets you buy it anyway, as long as you promise to play, um, let the kids play with it. So now we have the slingshot and an empty bottle. We're racking up on items here. Alright, so you can head back to your house. And there's really nothing else you can do in Orton Village yet. Um, since we don't have a opponent with us. Uh, we can't actually get to her because Colin's guarding her uh, by her house. Anyway, Ros Russell walks up and he says um, he just delivered something to our room. So... 
we're actually going to have to check that out in the next video. Um, join me next time in part two, 3 of Zelda World's walkthrough of Twilight Princess. Bye guys.